my washer. And the spiral, right? You had and the spiral, the spiral yeah. pan. And I had a backhoe in there. Wow. And I had made me a little pond and I had water running. It was like mid January. And it was it was pretty cold, but I had a I had a wetsuit. Huh. And I was uh, down in the water. I January. Was, that's high country. Burr. And, and the <laughs> water was freezing and it was snowing. And here I am out there uh, looking for gold. <laughs> and the more you high graded, the more you were finding these little s steel BBs. They were like little steel BBs with gold tails on them. Weird. And they were heavy. You know, steel could have been hematite maybe i mean you're uh, you're calling them steel but like hematite yeah. will look like steel um under the microscope maybe because it gets pretty bright there can be specular hematite but we got a lot of a lot of silver interesting so in, in the tough i guess the silver was i mean the in the tough you know any of the cavities or anything the gold and the silver would go see that's not normal right that's not usual to have any kind of value whatsoever in in tough cut types of formations gold is where you find it well i know and you know adam said that the geologists had never never know the place and so um you know at the, at the waterfall how high was the waterfall and you said there were like trees like they would come shooting out of there when it rained and what was the the deal with the waterfall well the underneath the waterfall would change a little bit but it was like sometimes you could stand up to it and look over the waterfall, but sometimes you had to look up at the waterfall. Wow, that because much the water just, some If it started raining up there, you better get the hell out of the way huh. because that whole area is going. And if your truck's down near the water, get it up on the side. Drive it as far up as you can because that water comes through. And I mean, it'll you'll see it just roaring through like a wall. You know, it'll be anywhere from a foot to 20, 30 foot high. You know? Oh, and uh, there's these big spires that come up, and they're like, uh, at the waterfall, they're 80, 100 foot tall. Wow. You know, and there's big logs, I mean, big trees that are stuck into it, you know, good 30 foot up. So That's you amazing. You don't want to be, yeah, no kidding. I mean, you, you know. can... There's there's videos online of, <clears throat> you know, people, you know, they're, they're filming and there's a dry creek bed and here comes this wall of water. It's not a, that's, um, there's no doubt that that's a real thing. And especially in that country, because all that kind of dirt, um, it's not soil. The water doesn't soak in. It's all basically hard pan. It's all bedrock. Even if it's, even if it's not hard rock, it's water impermeable. And so you get any amount of waterfall and it accumulates and it channels into one narrow channel and it's going to have a force that's pretty amazing right yeah the uh we had to stay camped up there's this one flat spot and adam's always said that it's a place where gold does where gold it can't go anywhere Mm. You know, that it's stuck in stuck. that place. Yeah, like a basin. Yeah. And I, I dug up that place where we were camped and looked in there. But uh, I never got any high gold in it, except back up in the canyons near Adams Camp. You know. So what's the, I mean, what's the next step? Let's, so let's say, <clears throat> you know, you can get access again. Um what 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 would you do first? Reevaluate the mercury. Yeah. Yeah, get those re assayed and everything, because that's that's meaningful, real meaningful. Mm -hmm. Plus, over by Adams Camp, there's uh, in between High Camp Mountain and Adams Mountain, there's uh, a breccia, breccia zone yeah brescia yeah sure and it uh when you walk up on it i found it when it was raining and when you walk up on it it just looks like the the uh quartz is dripping out of it and it's just it's the whole side of the mountains just shattered and that's where it where the stream bed kind of is tight and you can tell that you're getting near the center because uh, from what i understand the the uh when you get into gold, gold bearing zones, that the breccia is in the center of it. Uh huh. I mean, that's the that's the 
the liquid coming <clears throat> the intrusion, up right, that comes up and up. melts uh, the walls, and the walls fall into it and refreeze as it, you know, yeah. reaches the surface and all that. Yeah. So, so it, it's interesting. I mean, it seems like a long shot idea, but you talk about the mountain looks like it was shattered. I mean, what if it was a, you know, meteorites are supposed to carry a lot of precious metals just because of their nature. What if it's a meteorite that hit there and impacted the area? And there's this really super rich zone where the meteorite is and a little bit of it disseminated out through time. And if it was an ancient meteorite impact, then it would have had time to kind of for that concentration to migrate a little bit and create some of the high, but still not, you know, super amazing values of the other the stuff you've already assayed. Well, let's let's get back to uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the first geologist. He always said that there was no ground movement that there, the fracturing wasn't there. But when you when I started getting into Granite Mountain and I started uh, mapping the faults and everything in there and the uh, the microgranite uh, uh, intrusions, yeah. Intrusions. Uh, I started coming up with a lot of, there. I counted probably better than seven to nine intrusions. And the one up on side of the Granite Mountain, it's probably 25 foot across, you know, and we got some gold out of that. Hmm. And so are those intrusions in the maps in the book? No. No. So just your personal No, records. I said there was nothing. But well, know, but you're, I mean, but I mean, you were there, right? So, I mean, even a professional who comes up for a day, they're only going to get so much information. Right. right. You were there for years every weekend you said in the night it was the 90s you're spending 150 bucks on gas to go from el paso to up there every weekend right. that's a i mean that's a lot of time on the ground you know you can't just replace that with credentials that's and, why i moved up to las cruces so i could you know, be a little closer yeah oh but anyway that you line the springs up like i was talking huh. about before and the springs run right through there and then you start looking in the the 25 foot dike on this, on Granite, on High Camp Mountain, I started noticing that there's a formation way down here, probably 400 yards down that way. And I started looking and I went over there and climbed around. What had happened was this is a fault right here. That whole, the, the whole, both the mountains had displaced. Uh. This is the other side of the, the the dike from granite from high camp mountain and it's over here so everything had moved how far do you think they call that throw sometimes i guess yeah three three four hundred yards Whoa, that's a that's a lot of displacement i think and see that's why that's why when we start talking about the limestone the limestone actually was flowed up you know, it wasn't washed in, it was flowed up apart with all this ground movement going on. And Granite Mountain was, uh, it's real weird because Granite Mountain, the fault goes right through the middle of it. And you can tell that what came up was hot. And some of the rocks are even still laying there and you half of them are hot and half of them aren't. Uh. You know, it's a weird place, but we hit some. And it's got... Uh, no, what do you call the the large crystals? 